Check out the MVP ladder on NBA.com where Seku ranks his top five candidates. And uh, no surprise at the moment, Giannis Antetokounmpo sitting atop MVP mountain. Go to NBA.com slash MVP ladder. Kawhi Leonard still in the running. I mean, it is only January. Got a ways to go. A lot of people still in the running. Looking for some revenge. Remember the Nets beat Toronto in Brooklyn about a month ago. D'Angelo Russell making things happen early on. Russell leads the break. Shabazz Napier for the layup. D'Angelo with 12 points, six rebounds, five assists in the quarter. Maybe the Twilight. best city edition jerseys in the league. In there. I agree. I agree. In Brooklyn, you're saying? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very strong. The bigger units there are pretty strong. Very. That's right. Kawhi also strong. He had 20 and 11. Toronto up by nine. Raptors on the run. Defense to offense. Kawhi not looking, but finding Pascal Siakam. Most improved player candidate. Quickly becoming one of my favorite guys to watch in this league. Well, and, and a top five all-time NBA name, Pascal oh, Siakam. Easy. OG Ananobi, pretty good himself. Fred Van Vliet, in fact, they got they plenty got, of good they names. Got, they got their own all-name squad. Uh, he finds DeLon Wright with the layup. Toronto with 35 fast break points. Brooklyn had just 10 of them. Pretty easy night for the Raptors who win it by 17. So they've won four in a row now. Seven straight on their home floor to improve to 17 and six with Kawhi Leonard and Kyle Lowry sharing floor time together. It's good when your stars can play games, right? It usually that helps. helps. Uh, that guy could not play, unfortunately. Giannis not in the lineup against the Wizards. Sore right quad. Bradley Beal in the lineup for Washington and playing well. Different wizard look without John Wall out there. Wizards are a dangerous team right now, Griff. I, I wouldn't want to see them on the schedule because, as they like to say around those parts, everybody eating these. Yes, no question. Look at Beal going after his own. Knocking it down, 21 at the half. Third quarter, here come the Bucks. Chris Middleton, all-star? He certainly is for me, and I, I think Giannis and Chris Middleton are the best duo in the Eastern Conference. Mm, Eric Bledsoe, 4-3. I prefer a hand up, Jeff Green, but uh, uh, you know, here a and shrug, there. yeah. Mix in a contest. Bucks not with their best three-point shooting night, just 13 of 40 on the night. Thomas Sadoransky was the story for Washington. Lay up there, Wizards from three. Trevor Ariza knocks down one. Jeff Green will knock down in one as well. They had 10 threes between the two of them. Ariza with six of those. Sadoransky, who you mentioned, Matt, is one of the big reasons this team plays so well in the absence of Wall, because he's one of these guys that just is playing his role. He's a hockey assist guy. He may not be prolific statistically every night, but he's gonna play both sides of the floor. Middleton with a jab step. He knocks down the three, 25 for him. Washington's lead down to six. Sadoransky finding his guys. Green for three. Then Sadoransky, the lob to Beal, who had 32 on the night. And welcome to the triple-double club, Tomas Sadoransky. First career triple-double for him. 18 points, 12 rebounds, and 10 assists as the Bucks suffered just their third loss in their last 14 games. Washington improves to five and three since John Wall went down for the season, and everybody talking about their guy, Sato. That's Sato. I told somebody before, they said he's a he's a glue guy. I say he's way more than that. You know, you can tell by the night. Glue guys don't get triple doubles, you know, so uh, he, he's, a, he's a talented player. We need him to continue to be that. He's our starting point guard, so, you know, we got to continue to trust him, continue to rely on him to make decisions, be aggressive at all times. Yeah, it just looks like his confidence is an all-time high. Um, you know, he hit a couple of threes, um, and he's hitting, for at least tonight, felt like he hit just enough threes and to, you know, kind of keep his, his drive game open, his floater. He hit some tough floaters in the paint, um, finding guys. It's just overall game looks really good. First career triple-double for Tomas Sadoransky, but you remember he started 30 games for the Wizards last year. Not going to put up John Wall type of numbers, certainly, although he shot the ball really well, 53%, 50% from three-point range. How much changes for the Wizards with Sadoransky as the point guard? Quite a bit. I mean, you're talking about a guy with great size, a really good vision, and an ability just to run the basic offense, Griff. Changes everything when everyone gets to simplify how they get the job done because this guy is really deliberate, creative, but deliberate 
in what he's doing. It helps the flow, I think, for everybody else because Sato is playing the way that he is. And he's unselfish, maybe almost to a fault at times. Even going back to when he was playing in Europe with Caja Sol in Spain, he was dictating outcome there by being a guy who plays both sides of the court and will just make the right play. If it's a hit ahead and a hockey assist sort of way, that's what he's going to do. It's not about him. It's about putting everybody else in position to be successful. And when you're in a situation where you lose a player as significant as John Wall, role delineation becomes really clear. Mm -hmm. This is Brad Beal's team to carry now. And Sato's going to be part of helping that happen. And also, as Otto Porter gets healthier and is more in the flow and finds his rhythm, you're going to see that he's the best version of himself at times like this as well because he gets to be a little bit more ball dominant. You know, it's interesting because Wizards fans have been talking about this for years, that it needs to be somebody's team. And when Wall's <laughs> not out there, that's pretty clearly defined. Uh, much more coming up here on Game Time presented by State Farm. The Beard bombards the Cavs to extend his 30-point game streak and then some. See how much more when we return. Tonight in Salt Lake City, there's LeBron James. Uh, he and the 8th place Lakers will run. Well, he won't, but uh, the ninth place Jazz are going to host them in this game. These two teams are separated by two games in the West standings. Utah wins tonight. It's a one-game separation. L.A. wins tonight. It is a three-game separation. A big one from Salt Lake City. And right now, we welcome in live on Arena Link, Lakers sideline reporter for Spectrum Sports Net, Mike Trudell. And Mike, it is great to see you. We know that LeBron James is going to miss at least the next three games, but he might return next Thursday against OKC on TNT. Are you optimistic about his chances of playing in that game? Rick, first of all, it's great to see you, man, as always. And I'll look, I'll just tell you what everybody else knows or maybe doesn't know is a better way to put it about LeBron, and that's whether or not he'll return in that game. We do know he's going to be reevaluated after these next three games, and you would theoretically think if all went well, maybe he can return uh, for game action, but he is yet to practice yet, right? They haven't started to ramp things up. We don't have any reports uh, of progress in that uh, sense, other than the fact that he, of course, is improving uh, just by not being out there in games. So it is a little bit of a wait-and-see mode, Rick, as the Lakers try to survive in what you mentioned is a very tight Western Conference playoff race. No doubt about it, man. And uh, what, what have the Lakers learned? I mean, you're with them every game uh, and, and, and seeing it up close and personal. What have they learned about themselves in these eight games without LeBron? You know, so they're starting to get better. I think you have to put it into context as well that it's not just LeBron that's out. It's Rajon Rondo, who is kind of a secondary leader and playmaker. And then they missed Kyle Kuzma for two and a half games uh, when he had a lower back contusion. And we saw what Kuz did last game when he dropped 41 in three quarters. So that was certainly a, a key additional piece. When you have three guys out, it just makes things tricky. But the, the simple fact of it, Rick, Offense is what's dropped off completely without LeBron. They rank 28th in the league in off of offensive efficiency since LeBron went out on Christmas Day. Defense, on the other hand, has been great. They've actually been the second best defensive team in the entire NBA over the course of, of that time frame. So that's what we've seen. LeBron has been that important to the offense. And, you know, you got to shout out Rondo a little bit, too, for what he'd been doing. No doubt. Uh, great point and great stats right there as well. Now, Luke Walton recently told Brandon Ingram and Lonzo Ball to play with more passion. How was that message received? Well, he said it after the Minnesota game, which was one of the worst games of the season for the Lakers. They weren't in it uh, really right from the start. And uh, Rick, you know, especially for a couple of Minnesota guys uh, like you and myself, probably watched that one. And as things went for the next couple of games, though, they really answered the bell. That was for a tough road win in Dallas, where the Mavs had been 15-3. and three. And then, of course, the Lakers beat Detroit rather handily at home. And uh, the way that Luke put it into context was, look, I, he always expects more from these players. It, it wasn't so much a criticism and a critique, uh, although, of course, he he was criticizing the, the last couple of games that they had put in. But when LeBron went out, that changed what the expectation was for those two players. And sometimes it takes a bit of an adjustment time from when you're just uh, you're operating under a certain context, when LeBron's on the court, and then when he's not, you, you do have to change the approach. And Luke went to the public, and so far they've responded. And look, they're going to need him to do so again tonight if the Lakers are hopeful to get a win in a tough place to play right here in Utah. Mike, really appreciate it, man. You know I'll be texting you in the days to come for Intel on your Lakers. Enjoy the game. Safe travels, and we'll talk soon. Hey, my pleasure. Always good to see you, man. That's my dude right there, Mike Trudell, Rick Kamla, Steve Smith, and Brendan Haywood here on uh, Game Time Live, presented by State Farm. Now, Kyle Kuzma dropped a career-high 41 Wednesday in 29 minutes. It was uh, you know, a wide score, so his services weren't required 
in the fourth quarter. Last year, 16.1. This year, 18.8. Put his ascension into perspective. Well, what I like about it is sometimes you score some points when you're not winning games. And now he's added to this his point average, Brendan and Rick, and they're winning games. And he works on his game. He has the mindset and the size and ability to be a great guy to play off a guy like LeBron James or even off Brandon Ingram and Lonzo Ball before LeBron got there. This kid is a score, a scores mentality. And I look at him as, yes, he doesn't pass a lot, Brendan and Rick, but this kid is a score and it doesn't bother him. I am what I am. I play hard. I work on my game. I've been knowing him and seeing him since he was young in high school. This kid has that type of ability. I think it's amazing when you look at his ascension. I think what's really truly amazing about it is the fact that he wasn't supposed to be the guy. The guy that was supposed to make the big jump and be LeBron James is number two was Brandon Ingram. And when you look at how it's gone, he hasn't stepped on anybody's toes. He just maximized his potential and he's taken advantage of opportunities when they presented himself to them like LeBron James being out right now. Now was my chance to go for 40 and help us win a basketball game. That's something he might not have a chance to do when LeBron is there. So I look at him taking advantage of opportunity, the way he plays, the confidence. And I think that we're going to see him play even better because this was a guy that shot 36 percent from three last year this year he's only shooting 30 percent from three and he's taking six threes a game so that's a low percentage to take that amount of threes we know he's going to catch up to that number that he shot last year at some point and when he does look for his uh, scoring average to possibly go over 20. And also Brendan he's going to have to rebound the basketball better at that size I can't come up with them one and twos he's going to have to get on the glass at that size. And I know Brendan was clocking uh, the rebound column uh, in that 41 point game the other night. Well he normally averages about six rebounds so I'm just going to say that's one of those anomaly games where he had it going and he he was just focusing strictly on his offense. When when LeBron comes back, Kuz, go was, get on the glass. Hey, when LeBron <laughs> comes back, he'll be back every round again. On the hey, glass. Look, Blake Griffin played 37 minutes the other night and it had no rebounds. All right, it happens sometimes.